on this week's Performance TV, we've headed to North Carolina to the offices of Steel Rubber. Tommy and Kathy give us a tour of the factory and an install on a window seal. Stay tuned, Performance TV coming right up. Welcome to this week's Performance TV. If you've got an old classic car, you've got the rain leaking in around the old seals and the moldings in the windows, or if you're restoring a classic car, you're going to want to top it off with some new trim and some moldings to have it all new again. Well, we're gonna, today's show, we're going to show you how to install the window molding on a 69 El Camino. And it's hard to believe. Where do you get new moldings and new seals for an old vehicle? Well, it's hard to believe. It all started with this 1931 V12 Cadillac for steel rubber products. And to learn more about that company, let's check in with Kathy. Well, Tommy, we have a beautiful painting here of that 1931 Cadillac. And Joanna, this is pretty much where the company got its start. It, it did. Um, this vehicle is uh, my grandfather's vehicle, actually. Um, he started it. He couldn't find the parts he needed. He was a tool and die guy. And uh, just started making the parts. Um, and he... All his buddies found out, his car club found out, next thing you know, it was a little sideline business, and in the 70s, um, when the automakers weren't doing as well, um, he decided to make it a full-line business, and now we're over 60 employees, and almost 60 years. Well, you know, you mentioned car clubs, and there's a lot of things that, that you guys do here at Steel Rubber Products, and that's your really cool open house that you have. Yeah, in fact, we pull this car out for that open house. Um, we have done the open house when we celebrate our 50th anniversary in 2008, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. We had over 200 cars this past year. You know, I think I was here for the one in 2008. That was definitely, <laughs> a, it's a really good time that you guys have here, and just everything that the company has grown into. Yes, yes. We, we, we've expanded to so many different things, and it's always so fun to see what our customers come up with next. Um, we have a variety of cars, and the creativity is amazing. Well, you know what? It's always great to see what's coming up next when Tommy is working on a car, and I think it's about time to get started. I brought in an expert today to help me with this window seal. And Matt Agosto, you're the president of Steel Rubber. You're going to help me with this. This, oh. this, this is not a tough project? It def, it, I'll tell you, the vent window projects always look tough. But if you go take the right steps, it's really not a hard job to do. And a person can do it themselves. Well, I mean, you can yeah. see by we removed the old one from the other side. It's hard. It's brittle. It fell apart when we tried <laughs> to take it out. We're going to put a nice new one in here. Right. That's why it needs to be replaced because when it gets hard and brittle, that means it leaks. Water's going to get in. It's going to ruin your nice interior. Yeah. I so mean, this thing's hard it. as a rock. I mean, <laughs> no wonder it leaks. Yep. Well, first step, we've got to get the old one out to be able to put a new new uh, seal in it. So what's the first step to getting this one on, new on this out? particular vehicle? This one has, uh, you have to remove the frame to be able to, uh, to work on a vent. And uh, this one has three screws on uh, the front part of the door here that holds the, the, the frame in, as well as uh, a bolt that'll hold the frame on the lower end, and then your pivot. And that's locked into your crank, so there's a bolt there. We take those out, and there's a little adjustment nut on the bottom that you loosen up, and we should be able to pull the whole frame up. All right, well, you, you do those. I'll get started in here, and okay. we'll get this thing out of here. And while we're doing that, let's check back in with Kathy. All right. Well, Tommy, it's really quite amazing and almost mind-boggling everything that they do to build these parts here at Steel Rubber Products and Danny, who is in charge of product management. Danny, where does it all get started? It all gets started with uh, our customers. Uh, either we'll, Sometimes we get an original from a customer that we actually design the part off of, and they'll ask us, can you make this, and we'll take a look at it and see you know, how it lends to the machining, if it's traditional machining or if we need to use uh, some CAD programming to, to get the molds where we need them to be. 
And, and we're in a room here where there are all kinds of books with, with history of, of vehicles and, and a lot of other pieces that you guys have made that you can kind of take a look at if you're going to be building something new. Yeah, we have hundreds of books that are original parts manuals, um, you know, master parts catalogs, stuff like that, um, as well as we have everything on the wall that you see here. Um, it kind of is a physical catalog of the parts that we already manufacture. Uh, so we can take a look um, to a piece that we get in and compare it and see, you know, if it's something similar to that, something we already make. Okay, so now you've, you're going to make this part. We go on into the room and, and the guys will start working with the CAD machine, correct? That's right. Building everything and it really it's quite a process to get us from where the part comes in, making the decision and an end product. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more difficult than even like reverse engineering it because there's, there's so much decomposition on the parts. There, there's a lot of skill and practice that goes into it. All right, well, we are going to find out a whole lot more about what they do and actually see them make these parts. We'll do that and more coming up next here on Performance TV. This edition of Performance TV, presented by ARP, is being brought to you by Truck Claws. Get your truck unstuck. Stinger Trailer, Folding Motorcycle Trailer. Cargo Racks, Life Reorganized. And by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Welcome back to Performance TV here at Steel Rubber Products in Denver, North Carolina. And Danny, we had a chance to see before the break how you start off with a part, go through all of your research, everything that you need to do. But now we've moved into a room where all the magic starts to happen, and I can't wait to see your machine over here in the corner. Yeah, this is our CNC machine. It takes our CAD program and our CAM process and puts it into action. Uh, it actually takes the solid block of aluminum and machines it uh, with uh, four different axes. You got front, back, left, right, up and down, and tilt. Okay, well, what I see here in front of me, this was all done by a really smart computer, and that would be the brain. This is all done by hand. Yeah, this is hand tooling. We've been doing traditional tooling since the very beginning, and there's, there's some processes that lend themselves better to that. Uh, this is actually a vent window mold. Um, you know, left and right side, and you have two pieces for each one, of course, and also you have inserts like this. Okay, well, this is something very similar to what different vehicle, but what Tommy's working on with the El Camino, and let's see how he's doing with his window vent. Well, Matt and I got the frame out for the vent. We had to remove all the screws that held the vent frame in. We removed the adjustment bolts on the main window, kind of pulled it out of the way so we could remove this frame. Right. Got it here on the bench, and now we want to remove the glass from the frame. Now we've drilled out the little rivet that was right here. Now what, what do we got to do next, Matt? Okay, the next thing is to pull the glass out from the center. And this pull has some, here. yeah, and it has a couple little tabs, so you turn it almost all the way out. Until they line up, up, it'll come right straight out. Right. There all right, go. we got our glass out. Now we're ready to remove now the Now we're ready to just yank this out. Now it's held into a retainer here, so it's going to be really hard. And, and it's hard and brittle, too. Right. So you might want to find a way to get in it to pry it. Uh, when yeah, you can see it was held in there. So yeah. just got to get it removed get once you get it started. It. Then maybe it'll get it a little easier and you just work that all the way up. All right. Oh, yeah. It's and falling out of there now. Down. Yeah. And it's, boy, it is brittle, falling yeah. apart. Look at yeah. that. Well, once once we get all this removed, then we're ready to install the new rubber. Uh, right. We'll, we'll remove the, the, the back little piece. division post. Right. Matt and I are about to get the old seal out of here. When we get done with that, it's ready to put in the new seal. In the meantime, let's check in with Kathy. Well, Tommy, I can really see why those people needed to change that seal out. And Danny, we have stepped in out to the room where all kinds of magic is happening and all kinds of different processes. Yeah, we, uh, we have about four different processes here, one of which is our extrusion process. Um, we have uh, sponge and dense rubber. Uh, the sponge one will go through a salt bath at about 400 degrees, actually curing the rubber, creating the expansion process of the rubber um, and then from there we take these strips and then we move them on to our sponge molding as you can see here we'll put holes in them pins in them uh, put molded ends on them and that's what actually gives us a finished product and not only the sponge we also have it where it's a harder denser rubber we have the dense rubber which lends itself more to glass and, and things like that um, and we take that as well 
and actually vulcanize the rubber together with heat. So a lot of people glue it together, um, but ours becomes one molecularly singular piece. Wow, and it just all these different processes going in here, all these different parts that we're seeing made just because of those two machines. And this is just a little bit of what you guys do here, and there's just so much more to see. Restoration tip with George Lopez. This week's OPGI's restoration tips is engine decals. When you're doing a high-end build like we did here for this year's SEMA car, our 1970 442 W30, you want to make sure you have the correct engine decals. It's very important to the restoration and it just specifies that this car was done correctly. For example, we have all the engine code decals, we have battery tags, air cleaner decals. Uh, radiator decals, including that very uh, unique uh, alignment stripe radiator decal there, air conditioning decals, and anything else that shows how the, this car was built originally. It looks great, it makes people want to make their cars like this, and it just shows what a proper restoration should be. That's this week's OPGI Restoration Tip. We'll be back with more of Performance TV right after this. Performance TV, coming to you from Steel Rubber's home office in North Carolina. Welcome back to Performance TV. Matt, we've made great progress on replacing the seal in our window, and now it's time to put in the new rubber. Right. Right, it's time to put it all together. All right, so is there, there's some tips and there's tricks to getting this installed. It's going to lock into a channel, so there's no real right. fasteners on this piece. No, but I like to put a little bit of soapy water on it, just to give me a, a, a little something that helps slide it in. Right, because you know? we're going to have to adjust it. We're going to have to get this, right. this block up into the corner once we get it in the channel. Right, we put one side in All right. first, right. and then we tuck the other side in. And uh, I uh, I recommend don't use a screwdriver that's got a sharp edge, because that could... It'll damage the rubber. You right. don't want to cut it. Before we get too far, let's go ahead and pull her up. All right. Pull it up into the corner. Yeah, because you... There it goes. Oh, it yeah. popped right in. You can. Yeah. You can tell when it gets Good. in there. Good. We right. want to make sure this is in the right position which it looks good. You All just right. kind of feed it around. Right, and let's go ahead and Kind of like when you were in. a kid putting a bicycle tire on. <laughs> pop it all into place. And pop it into place. Make sure it all gets in. All right. All right. So we'll just work this and around, just work, work this it all the way all down the way around. around. Make sure it starts on the one end. And if we have to, we'll come back in here and get it from the other side. All right, we can always tweak it and adjust yeah. it. Because I can feel this is not quite all the way in. It yeah. has to get behind us. Right. Oh, there it goes. Too. Popped in. I felt right. my finger. All right. And once we get that locked into place, and we put on our back piece? After all of this is on, then we put our back piece on. All right. And we do have little tabs on the back of it. So you just put it in and bend those tabs over. That holds it in place. Exactly. All right. That's well, it. It just, just has to fit into the little ends here. All right. We'll get it finished up and get our window back installed. Let's check in with Kathy one more time. Well, Tommy, here at Steel Rubber Products, there are different techniques for creating their products. And we have a little molds here behind us. Yeah, these molds are for our compression process. Basically, to cure the rubber, you need compression and heat. And there's different ways to do that. We have some molds that are transfer or injection molded, uh, basically pressing the rubber into the cavity. And then we have others that are hand loaded, and then the, the pressure is put on a, by a, a press. There, there has to be hundreds, if not thousands, of, of these molds behind us. In this section here, we have about 2,500 molds. Um, and this is a fraction of what we have. These are our smaller molds. You know, and, and you guys make so many different parts. I mean, there's even little grommets and stuff like that, too. Yeah, a little, everything from little small grommets that sometimes will have a mold that puts out 24 at a time to big six foot long running boards. And, and certain presses, you can run the small parts for the running boards, you're gonna need a lot bigger of a press. Well, it's just amazing when you when you see all these parts being made by hand, you know, how long it really goes into making a part and doing it right. Yeah, you, there's a lot of steps you can skip and get a cheaper part, uh, a part that doesn't perform as well, but we make sure that our part is gonna 
protect your vehicle. And, you know, it, it, it really lends itself to having a better part put it on your nice car. Well, and that's what Tommy has been doing. And you know what? He should be just about done. Well, Matt, we've got our new seal installed in the vent wing here. And now we've got to put the window back in. Right. We've got to be sure we stay in the track. Right. And the top stays in the track, too. And it just pulls down got until we get these screws up. lined up. And All right. Make sure this stays. Yeah, i got to keep this in line in the channel. Right. And just pull it back in, in place. Yep. Now, something's hanging up, and it could be the uh, alignment screw down there. All Put right. your hand in there and see if you can get that. Oh, yeah. Feel that there bottom of Yep. Okay, pull it towards the back of the door. There we go. There yeah, it is. Well, there it falls right in place. How about that? Now, we even put it in a new uh, guide well, right here. Right, we put a new uh, glass run channel on this side. Perfect. Looks good. All we got to do is tighten up the bolt. Right. Make sure this is all lined up. And uh, in fact, we're just. Looks great, Kathy. You ought to check this out. Simple, easy to install, all brand new seals. Go. Not going to leak, guaranteed. Well, Tommy, that really makes a big difference in that El Camino. And, and Danny, you know, we watched all the parts being made, but now we're kind of in a, a finishing area here where we've got to clean the parts up a little bit. Yeah, after they come out of the mold, the parts do have a little bit of what we call flash on them. It's a little extra piece of rubber, um, and they need to be trimmed up. So they come over here, and they're actually hand trimmed um, with really precise measures too, um, whether it be with scissors, or on a, a grinding wheel, whatever needs to be done, but make sure it's nice and you know still protects the part. Sure, because you don't want to do too much because right. then you just pretty much ruined the part. So it, it helps keep the integrity of the part then. Absolutely. So once we've finished with that, and I see the, the ladies here have stacks and stacks of parts that they're going through. Once they've done all that, where do they go next? Once they're trimmed, they are a finished part. So then they'll go over to our packaging and we'll you know, put it in plastic, make sure it stays nice and clean, and send it to our warehouse. Probably something a little bit like this. And hey, Tommy, this probably looks uh, pretty familiar to you, seeing as you just installed one of these. Well, I tell you what, we have so much more to find out about the company here at Steel Rubber Products and how they take care of their customers. And we'll have more on that right after this. <music> This edition of Performance TV, presented by ARP, is being brought to you by Gibson Performance Exhaust. Unless it's a Gibson exhaust, you're settling for second best. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. Stage 8, the world's best locking fastener. And by Steel Rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Welcome back to Performance TV. As we continue our visit here at Steel Rubber Products in Denver, North Carolina, now we've looked at the whole process of how they make so many of their parts. Now we are here with many of their parts. This is just one of the rooms of all finished goods. Everything from so many of their different extrusions they do to their bulkier part items. Uh, this building is huge, and when you stop and think that they have over 12,000 different SKUs, that's a lot of parts. Plus another building just next door that has a lot of the smaller parts and where they're doing all of their shipping to get the parts out to you. Well, not only do steel rubber products make great products, they have an excellent service staff here in the customer service department. You can call, ask questions about your make and model. They can get the right parts for you. They can take your order. And once you get those products, they can even help you with some install questions. But if web is more your style, check out their website. Extensive search engine. You can search make, model, year, you can, all kinds of things to find the right parts for your car. Be sure and check them out. And Steel Rubber will help you restore the car of your dreams. You know, when you want to find all of the parts for your ride and you really want to have something in your hand to be able to look through 
and well, you don't want to look through a great big 600 page catalog. Well, Steel Rubber Products came out with something really, really cool. You just let the folks know what year, make, and model of your ride, and they're going to send you a customized catalog that has every single part in it that you need just for you. And hey, if you're doing something like a street rod or whatever, they also have their universal catalog as well with lots of cool stuff to get your ride finalized. <laughs> This car is a 1955 Chevy. Uh, I've owned it for 18 years. Um, it's a house of color, sunset pearl, and tangible mix, 50-50. Back in the 1970s, I wanted an orange crate bicycle by Schwinn, and uh, mom and dad couldn't afford that bicycle, so I decided to build my own. I took the Schwinn emblems off the, the back of the banana seat and put them into the seat design, and uh, I have a little Schwinn touches here and there just to uh, you know, kind of bring out the old orange crate idea. I drive it regularly. Um, so I can't just have a drag only car. I gotta be able to use it on the street. It makes more sense to me. And I'm not a, I'm not Daddy Warbucks, so I gotta have a multi-purpose vehicle, you know. It's just, I'm having a blast with it. Uh, it's been 1046 at 128. Uh, it goes faster every time we've been to the track, so we're still tuning on it. All of the car is all steel. All real glass, weighs 3,680 pounds with me in it, so it's heavy. Um, so it performs really well for a heavy car. Well, Kathy, I don't know about you, but I have a whole new respect for the seals of my car and that water not coming in the windows after seeing how intense it is here at Steel Rubber. And, and you see the, the type of stuff that, you know, these seals and stuff go through when you were trying to take that one out. I'm telling you, it was pretty impressive. Very, very neat place. And, you know, and impressive is how they make all this stuff and how the whole process happens, and it's just absolutely amazing. And we're glad we got to take you along and show you just a little bit of what they do here at Steel Rubber Products. We'll see you next time around here on Performance TV. You did a nice job for that. Yeah. <laughs> well.